Hi, I'm Mark Suansang. I'm a BenQ brand ambassador, and in this video, I'm going to give you my review and my thoughts of the BenQ SW271, which is also their latest and greatest flagship SW series display as well. But before I can do that, I want to give you a little bit of a background of BenQ SW series line of display. A few years back, BenQ have released their first SW series display, and that is the SW2700PT. That was a 27-inch WHQD display. That means also really high resolution, but not necessarily 4K. It is a hardware calibrated display that, again, uh, with stringent requirement and it's designed specifically for photographers. I have a few of those display in my studios. I still use them today. I still love them. Um, fast forward by about a year or two, BenQ have also released their second SW series of display and that is the SW320. Now 320, the SW320, it's kind of my daily driver uh, at one of my um, one of my workstation in my office. I use it a lot. It is a 4K 32 inch display. The display panel itself, the color is amazing. The experience is immersive. But you know, to be honest, you a 32 inch can be a little bit large at times. So, so, BenQ wanted to address the concern of the creative professional and decided to release a third and the latest in the series of SW series display. This is the SW271. Now, what's really cool about the SW271 is that it is a 27 inch display. It's much more compact than the SW320. Still great same panel quality, but this is now a 4K 27 inch display. So if you really think about it, the SW271 kind of take on a few attributes of their siblings. Uh, it takes on the size of the SW2700PT that was released a few years back, and it also took on the 4K resolution and the 4K capability of the SW320, the sibling that comes just right before this one, and combine those two together to create this amazing, great panel, great display quality, great you know, like I said, it's awesome uh, in a much more compact form factor. So if you're looking for a smaller 4K display, something around 27 inch, this is going to be it. This is the display for you. So like I said, this is a 27 inch 4K display. The aspect, uh, the aspect ratio of this display is 16 to 9. Now, like with all BenQ SW uh, series of display, it can display 99% Adobe RGB and 100% Adobe RGB. So to give us a little bit of background, Adobe RGB and being able to display 99% of it, it's kind of the gold standard in hardware calibrated display industry right now. Specifically, if you're a photographer, uh, if you're a videographer, you know, you may be more concentrated or more concerned about the DCI-P3 color space, which is designed more so for video. And amazingly enough, you know, all of BenQ's display, if you go out and buy now, they have all upgraded firmwares and everything. And, you know, for even this one can also, you can change it to DCI P3 uh, color space, you know, right out of the box. You know, they pre-programmed pre this with DCI P3, Adobe RGB, sRGB color space, and a few other ones as well which is really awesome. But if you're a photographer, you're really looking for a display that can show 99% RGB because you know that's a lot of colors that can be displayed. And that also means a lot of color depth and a lot of deep saturation colors as well. Now, like I said, this is a hardware calibrated display and this is the third one in the SAVU series. So what is a hardware calibrated display? Well, a hardware calibrated display meaning that there's a com little computer inside the display itself that does the color correction when you actually do the calibration in the beginning. Uh, if you don't have a hardware calibrated display, most of the time what ends up happening is that you plug in the, uh, a, you know, a, some other brand of monitor uh, to your computer and whatever computer you may have, that's perfectly fine. The problem with that is when you use a software, for example, such as i1 Profiler or even other software, you know, such as a Spider device, what you're doing is that you're manipulating the signal that's being output to the display itself to kind of match the color. When that happens, you start to compress certain tones, you start to expand certain tones. So the signal is not quite as pure as it can be. Think of this analogy itself. It's kind of like you're shooting JPEG. So with the hardware calibrated display itself, it does cost a little bit more than a non-hardware calibrated display. But the great thing about it is you're, you, you know, you're really using the raw signal from a video card. That means the video card is outputting all the full signals to the display itself and the little computer inside the display has 
has a reference table and you know specifically in a BenQ itself it has a 3D 14-bit uh, LUT that stands for lookup table LUT and that's a color reference table that BenQ uses to make sure that the, the, the red that is explained to you is the precise red, you know, the blue, greens, and so forth are this specific reference color. And that's something that's really cool about the display, and that's something that I really love and respect because a lot of what I do is color critical uh, pictures. For example, these are all color critical edited photos um, that on my trip to Iceland, and I'm editing all of my photos on a hardware calibrated display. Now, while I'm on a trip, I may be editing on my laptop and so forth just to kind of get a rough idea get some pictures out but when I come back to my studio I generally review all those photos on one of the three SW series display that I have or one of those series you know I have like I said I have multiple uh, SW27 PTs the other thing itself is that, th is that this display itself uh, has a delta E value natively of less than two. Now, if you're unfamiliar with delta E, the lower the delta E value, the better the display is. And the delta E is simply the variations in color. So the higher number, the more variations of that specific tone or color, uh, the lower, the more precise that color is. Now, in order for a panel to be considered acceptable, you want a delta E of about less than five. Anywhere of like a delta E value of less than two is considered really great. Now, the thing is that once you really calibrate this, the delta E value is gonna be in like the 0 .0, 0 0.3 or 0 0.4, something like that. So what it can do, and the other thing too, is that we gotta remember one thing, that this is a 4K high resolution display. In order to get super precise color on a 4K display is even much more difficult because during manufacturing, in order to get these super precise panel, it's really difficult. So that means, you know, one of the terms we use that the yield is really low, meaning that there's only a few panels that qualify for these high quality displays that are being used in the display itself. So you're getting a really great panel on the inside as well. And no, this is not a tear down video. I'm not going to take apart the display. I'm just telling you how, uh, how and why and to give you a little bit of background about it. Okay. Now, in order to hardware calibrate display, so BenQ have released a software and it's called Palette Master Element. The nice thing about Palette Master Element is that if you download the latest version on BenQ website, you can use it to calibrate the SW271, which is this one. You can calibrate the two other generation of SW display that comes before it as well, which is really awesome. What that software does is that it talks directly with the hardware. Like I told you, the little computer is built inside the display itself to make sure that the color and everything are adjusted properly. Now, if we use uh, the color man uh, the color calibrator or color perimeter uh, manufacturer software, most of the time what you're doing, again, like I mentioned earlier in this video, is a software calibration. What you want to do is a, what you want to use is a native software that is built by the manufacturer of the display so that that color, uh, color perimeter or color calibration device can talk directly with the hardware and calibrate the color to get the most, uh, to get the most precise and the best color possible. Palette Master Element, I've been using it for a few years now, super easy to use, uh, very intuitive, uh, and you know, I, if you have a chance to try it, get this display, download that software and try it out, it's really awesome. Now, this being the latest in BenQ hardware calibrated display lines, it also comes with a few of the latest technology and also the latest design as well. Latest technology meaning that this display comes ready with HDR. That means it can display high dynamic range content. Now, if you're using Mac, that may be not so much your thing unless you're hooking this up to an Apple TV 4K. And you know, you got to also make sure that your content can our HDR content as well. But if you're hooking it up to a PC, you know, there's a little bit more possibility there. So depending on the platform that you do editing on, but in general, the display itself support HDR content and that's really awesome. The other thing too is that being the latest in the SW series line display, this display comes with the latest IO. So it has all your standard connector. It has your um, uh, display port and so forth, which you can use the display port to mini display port. And it comes with all these cables within the box. So you can hook it up to your older Mac. You can hook it up to the latest MacBook Pro uh, that uses the USB type C. That's kind of like the really oval small connector. And 
The nice thing about that is that if you're using a USB Type-C connector, you only need one cable, and that cable will carry both the display information here, that pretty much, you know, the pictures, that the data is being sent for the pictures, and it will also carry the USB signal as well. So on this, on this display itself, there are two USB ports, which you can then use as a USB hub and also an SD card reader. Again, something really positive for Mac users out there because uh, the MacBook Pros now don't come with an SD card reader built in. So if you have one of these, you don't really need an external reader anymore. You can use the one that's built in. And because there are USB uh, 3.0, uh, the speed, the read speed, it's really, really great. And I've done testing on that as well. And like I said, I've been using it. I do use the display card reader a lot of times. The other thing that's really cool about this display as well, and this is something new in the in their latest SW271, is that you can do Gamut Dual. Now, Gamut Dual is really awesome. Um, what Gamma Duo can do is that you can do a couple of things with this. So you can have the display set up in a side-by-side -side environment. So it will show you two pictures side-by-side. -side. And what's really cool about that is you can view one color space on one side and another color space on the other side. For instance, you can have uh, SRG, Adobe RGB on one side and sRGB on the other side. Or what you can do is have uh, Adobe RGB on one side and a black and white on the other side. So you can kind of compare different color space and when you do do the comparison you're going to see quite a big difference between the different color spaces that is using. For instance Adobe RGB is going to be able to display deeper orange especially in sunset shot versus the RGB itself. The other thing too is that you're not just limited to viewing it side by side because side by side can then make the experience a little bit small and tiny. Uh, you can also do a gamut dual with uh, using a mode called picture in picture as well. And in picture in picture, what the display is going to do is pop up with a secondary window on top of it. And this is done within the hardware itself. And again, you can view two different color spaces kind of side by side, which is really awesome on the same panel. So the reference photo can be Adobe RGB. The photo in the little opening window can be sRGB, so on and so forth. And you can switch these around. You can turn them into black and white. You can do ZCIP3 and Adobe RGB. So it gives you a lot of uh, a lot of flexibility in terms of making sure that the color does not only look good in one color space, but it also, or your editing does not only look good in one color space, but it looks good in multiple other color spaces as well, which are relevant. Um, I mean, to give you a little bit of an example, most Apple portable devices, the iPhone, the iPad, and so forth, now ships with DCI-P3 Calibrate. So if you want to make sure your picture looks good on there and also look good for, you know, for printing, for laugh, for editing in, in general as well, you can do a comparison between Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 color space as well, which is really kind of cool. With all BenQ SW series slime display, they also come with a black and white mode. So for instance, I can actually go and use the hockey puck that comes with all the SW series slime display. And by the way, I love this hockey puck a lot because it makes changing between different color space super easy. It could do Adobe RGB, for instance. I'll change sRGB and you can kind of see the difference uh, a little bit. In some shots more than others, you can kind of see clearly a difference. And you can also turn the whole panel itself into black and white as well. If you quickly want to see how that picture will look in black and white without you know viewing black and white under a you know color space of a display this will be the monitor and the display for you so again that's super saturated blue colors as you can kind of see there but in black and white mode it just turns everything black and white so this is adobe rgb this is srgb and we see the side by side comparison we'll see that one of them is less saturated than others the other thing about this display itself is that this display is Technicolor certified. Now, it might not mean a lot to us photographers, but Technicolor certified is kind of like, you know, Dolby, uh, Dolby certification and all the other things. It means that the panel itself meet the highest and strictest standard of display itself. So that's, you know, how they got the Technicolor display. Now, this probably, the Technicolor certification will mostly mean more for videographers, cinematographers and so forth. But you know what, as photographers, we can just say I'm using a, uh, I'm using a panel that is Technicolor color, um, certified too. I mean, seriously, Technicolor sounds really cool. So I think that's really awesome. So that's kind of like a little bit of a highlight about the new features and so forth that I think is really cool. 
So with all of BenQ SW lines of display, and I own multiple myself where I actually purchase them to use uh, in my studio and also recommend to my friends that it comes with everything out of the box. So it comes with all the cables that you need to hook the display up to, uh, to a Mac, to a PC, to a newer Mac, to an older Mac, uh, and so forth. So you don't have to worry about it. It comes with the standard hockey puck that allows you to go in and change colors, uh, change different uh, color profile mode, change the setting of the display without having to reach out to it. And to give you a little bit of anecdote about that, in my studio, uh, in my office, what I have is uh, three BenQ SW2 uh, 2700 PT mounted to a wall and they're mounted a little bit higher up and a little bit further back. So, you know, I don't go to adjust my display often, but when I need to, you know, it's much, it's much easier to just take the hockey puck, um, kind of still be in my seat, being able to see the, the other display side by side and so forth without having to like get up close and then having to step back and look at the display. and. Uh, so it's just a really convenient feature to have. I think it's uh, kind of one of those winner devices that they built with the display. The other thing too is that the shading hood itself comes standard with all of BenQ SW series line of professionally hardware calibrated display. And that's really awesome because, you know, to be honest with you, you don't want to buy a, a fairly moderately priced monitor. And I might say moderately priced because there are other manufacturers that, you know, charges a lot more for this. And I'll be honest with you, this is my analogy of it. I think the BenQ display itself can do 99%, 98-99% of what the other, you know, more expensive display can do at a third of a price. So. It's almost a no-brainer why I actually choose BenQ over the other brands. But anyway, like I said, it comes with a shading hood, and I love the shading hood itself because, you know, it's... It, uh, you don't have to go out and buy an extra one. Most of the other manufacturers will make you go buy an extra one. It doesn't come within a box, so that's kind of a bummer. The other thing, too, is that to remove this is super easy. You lift up the little two kind of like lock latches on the back up like this, um, just like that. Lift this up, slide it forward. There's a little latch here that grabs onto here, just like that. That comes out. This one, you just literally go in, push it up, and it's already out. So. Why am I showing you this? Because, well, if you're in a studio environment and you need to have your creative team, uh, you want to show this to the art director and people gathering around you, you know, to improve the shot, like this is what you need to do. Uh, if you're ever in that environment, you know, and you want to make sure that everybody can see, you can just simply come in and remove the shading hood. And it's just as simple as just snapping in and out. There's nothing protruding from the display itself. All the latches itself are built onto the shading hood. Now I know there are photographers who like to use their display not in horizontal orientation but in vertical. Essentially what you can do is you can just go ahead and rotate this to vertical. Uh, there is an accelerometer built in the display itself so every time you go to the menu it will rotate uh, with the proper orientation which is really kind of cool. And then afterwards you would go on your, uh, whether you have a Mac or PC and change the display orientation to portrait. So super easy, it can be done, you can kind of rotate it. Um, it doesn't talk with a computer per se to automate automatically rotate what's being displayed on the screen but uh, you know what it can do is really great so it supports for both now the reason why I mentioned portrait orientation as well is because these shading hood itself they're really awesome like I said uh, oh and by the way on the inside it's all black velvet so you know you won't get any stray light coming in bouncing off of this into the display itself but everything about the shading hood itself it's literally snap on snap off so you can take this apart uh, disassemble very easily but it also comes with extra parts as well so that if you ever want to use a shading hood and portrait orientation you can also do that as well which is really great and again you just simply line this up at the notches there are little triangles lock it in and you're done if you want to put the display back together you just simply snap it down but before I do that though I want to kind of point out something here if we have noticed in this video you're gonna see that the the picture itself goes almost all the way to the edge and there's literally like a quarter inch going around of this black rim but otherwise it's all display is super immersive I call this the infinite uh, infinite edge display um, I'm not sure if BenQ calls that or not but I really love that feature and I'll be totally honest with you that you know I really wish that uh, they you they built the display with the design for the SW 320 to 4k 32 inch display because it is such an awesome design it's super immersive I love it there's no distraction there's no borders to kind of take you away from your photo it's just literally your photo or whatever that you may be working on and again 
coming back from that my impression of that uh it's just simply lining up the the hooks push it down this latch it in the front on the back snap it in and now you have it on the very top here there's a little opening for the color calibrator uh so that's really great but anyway, like you said, the hood and everything comes built in. Oh, and by the way, one more thing that I didn't mention as well as this panel is also an IPS. That stands for in-plane switching, meaning that when you have people gather around, you, you know, the person in the middle versus the person on the side, they'll be looking at the exact same pictures. There won't be a lot of color variations and so forth. And that's another really great thing about these displays. One more thing as well that I didn't mention. And if you have purchased any hardware calibrated display before, you get a report card. This is kind of like a health report card from the manufacturer and you always get these. Now, if you go and buy just a normal display, it won't come with anything like this. These are literally for the high-end displays uh, that are hardware calibrated because you know, they need to make sure that it can display good colors, that it has a good uh, curve response, good color response, uh, a great delta E value, that's a variation color before it leaves the factory floor. So for instance, this, this display itself, and by the way, it always will list the serial number and the model number of display on the placard itself. So it's not just a generic one, it's a custom report for this specific display. Lastly, what I like to share with you is that if you run this display, not at native 4K, but you run it in some scaled resolution, you can do this on a uh, PC or on a Mac. You can easily go in there and pick like different scaling resolution. What you can have here, instead of having a full 4K, is you can actually have a display that has really smooth text and so forth, and it acts like a retina display, or in PC world, you call it HD DPI. For instance, I change between different resolution. Uh, when I'm editing versus when I'm doing, you know, a uh, Word document or when I need to compare multiple documents side by side and so forth, I kind of switch them around. But the texts always look really great. They always look smooth. It looks like uh, I'm, you know, I'm buying an Apple Retina display uh, with the benefit of having a hardware calibrated display, and that's something you won't be able to get uh, directly from Apple. So just kind of a little bit of those anecdotes there. Anyway, this has been kind of my thought uh, about the BenQ SW271 and the BenQ SW line of, uh, of display in general. I think they're really great. Again, you know, like I said, I think the price point of the display itself compared to any other manufacturers out there is really amazing. So that's it. That is a wrap up of the BenQ SW271 display. Again, it's an awesome display for a really great price. Uh, and you can't find a better display out there right now. There are different manufacturers. You know, if you're looking for a hardware calibrated display for photographers, I would look at BenQ first before you look anywhere else. So then save yourself the money, get the really great panel and get everything that comes inside the box, especially with this one, the infinite edge. Totally, I totally, totally love it. I can't tell you enough how much I love this. Please feel free to like this video and also share it with your friends and your groups of peers as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.